Joyce Eastwood and Hazel Pope were, by all accounts, the closest of friends. Their bond was said to be like that of twins. Joyce was 33 years old and a mother of six, and Hazel, aged 32, was a mother to five. Both women arrived on Australian soil from England in 1968, arriving in Perth, with Joyce, her husband James and their children arriving by ship, and Hazel, her husband Andrew and their children arriving by plane later that same year. Both families then spent 12 months at an immigration hostel in Fremantle before moving to Kulyanobing, a small town north of Perth, where both fathers, James and Andrew, worked in iron ore mining. From there, Joyce and Hazel's relationship flourished. The pair spent much of their free time together, not just by themselves, but their children also regularly socialised. They became so close to one another, sharing almost every aspect of their lives, including working at the same establishments, that in the years to come, the pair became known in the Australian media as Thelma and Louise, characters from a film of the same name who share a similarly close bond. The characters stick by one another no matter what and after being cornered by police on a cliff after going on the run following a number of crimes being committed, including murder, the pair decide to fall to their deaths together. This was the kind of bond that Joyce and Hazel had. In 1970, both Eastwood and Pope families moved from Western Australia to South Australia, to the city of Christie's Beach in South Adelaide. Again, with both families relocating together at the same time, just goes to show how close-knit the Eastwoods and Popes were. At this time, Joyce and Hazel got jobs at the Furnace Furniture Factory in Edwardstown, before gaining employment at Norlunga Meatworks. On the morning of the 8th of October 1970, Joyce and her sons, Jared and Barry, who also worked at the meatworks, got ready for the day ahead as usual. They were going to be picked up that morning by Hazel Pope in her Green Morris Minor. According to one of Joyce's daughters, Jeanette, her mother had entered her bedroom that morning to collect a suitcase, with the young girl still tucked up in bed. According to her, Joyce left the room, which was then followed by a lot of chatter outside the house. Shortly afterwards, Jeanette heard footsteps going back and forth on the gravel outside her window, followed by a car driving off. This was the last time Jeanette saw her mother alive. According to an on-duty security guard at the meatworks, both Jared and Barry were dropped off at the front gates of their workplace between 7 and 8 a.m., as Joyce and Hazel subsequently parked the car. Rather strangely, at this time, both women unloaded suitcases from the Morris Minor before being almost immediately collected by a male taxi driver, leaving their workplace and abandoning the vehicle in the car park. Joyce and Hazel were never seen again. It was only following the working day's end when Jared and Barry stood waiting for their mother and Hazel by the car that they realised something was awry. Believing their mother was perhaps working overtime, the brothers walked home and thought nothing more of it. But as the hours ticked by with no sign of Joyce, her family started to become concerned. In the weeks leading up to both mothers' disappearances, their children noticed a number of things which struck them as odd. More so some odd behaviour. Joyce started collecting money in a handkerchief and kept asking for her children's opinions on her having blonde hair. According to police, both women had allegedly handed in their notice at the meatworks a week prior to their strange disappearance, not to mention that Hazel had withdrawn 3,400 Australian dollars from a joint bank account. 
This particular detail was not known until Joyce's husband received an invoice from a department store in Perth for unpaid goods, bought by someone who signed their name as Hazel Eastwood, a combination of both missing women's names. Despite not conclusively ruling out full play as a possibility, every clue that authorities had indicated that the pair chose to disappear of their own accord. Therefore, they weren't in immediate danger and investigators didn't need to prioritise searching for them. Both women were in their 30s and it was well within their rights to disappear if desired, but the question remains as to why. The Eastwood Hope families themselves, however, found the whole thing incredibly absurd and mysterious. For both women to just take off without saying a word to their husbands and children was completely out of character, not to mention it caused them a great deal of anxiety and worry. Many web sleuths believe the most popular theory being that the women were not just friends but were in love with each other and ran away to begin a new life. But of course, like all theories, it comes with its own problems. If they did run away, how did they manage to completely vanish into thin air without leaving any sort of trail behind? Furthermore, no records of the women past 1970 exist. Did they perhaps change their names and live under new aliases in a new neighbourhood where perhaps nobody knew who they were? A neighbourhood which perhaps openly accepted the pair as a homosexual couple. In the 1970s, 80s and even 90s, Australia's gay community were victim to harsh abuse and terrifyingly traumatic events, including the darkest of crimes. Many homosexual men in particular fell victim to gay hate-based murders. In the 70s, when Eastwood and Pope disappeared, homosexuality was very much frowned upon and not widely socially accepted. So if Joyce and Hazel were in a relationship, they most likely would have wanted to keep their affair secret, likely not just for their own protection, but probably for their family's safety too. Others believe that Eastwood and Pope met with foul play of some kind, involving the taxi driver, but even if this was the case, we still don't know where the two mothers were travelling to or why they were both going with their suitcases. Was it ever established what both women took with them in these suitcases? When we think of getting a taxi and bringing along luggage, normally it's to go to the likes of an airport. Did the pair intend on flying across the country? Or further still, did they somehow return to the UK? This is a bit extreme, but certainly not impossible. Also, just to note, it is not known who the taxi driver was or where he worked, whether it was a private-owned company or otherwise. Regardless, it's unclear whether the driver has ever been traced or questioned in regards to the case. Others believe that Joyce and Hazel perhaps were involved in an accident of some kind, such as the vehicle being submerged in open water, resulting in Joyce and Hazel drowning, but unfortunately there is no evidence to indicate that this is the case. No Jane Doe's found in Australia have been matched to the missing women. According to an interview conducted during an episode of Missing Persons Unit, a few years after her disappearance, Joyce's brother, Ron, was on a bus travelling down a main street in Adelaide when he saw a woman on the bus who he believed to be his missing sister. He was planning on approaching her, however, she stepped off the bus at the following stop and swiftly disappeared behind a corner, never to be seen again. It's unconfirmed whether the woman was Joyce or not, but Ron was adamant that it was. Extensive investigations were conducted by South Australian authorities and a number of potential sightings were called into police over the years, but unfortunately no trace of Joyce or Hazel has ever been found. Something which many struggle to comprehend is the fact that both mothers abandoned their children, seemingly of their own volition. For a mother to abandon a child is one thing, but choosing someone else over those children must have left them completely heartbroken, not to mention confused and unfathomably hurt. They must have had so many questions. 
the main being why. Despite the hurt and disheartening lack of leads, for decades, Joyce and Hazel's children have continued to search for their missing mothers. All they want are answers so that they can get some closure and move on with their lives. At the time of her disappearance in 1970, Joyce Eastwood was 35 years old, Caucasian with a pale complexion and medium build, standing at 5 feet 5 inches tall and weighing around 132 pounds. She had light brown curly hair which had been permed. Hazel Pope was 34 years of age when she vanished, also Caucasian with a fair complexion and medium build. Hazel stood at 5 feet 4 and had short blonde hair and blue eyes. If Joyce and Hazel are still alive today, they would be in their mid-80s.